I sang that song for more than 60 years, a song of praise to Joseph Smith, the prophet of the restoration and founder of the LDS Church, the church I served as a bishop for five years. I knew the church was true. I was a faithful Latter-day Saint. My life has been built on certain truths, but wishing doesn't change the truth. Jesus said, you shall know the truth and the truth will make you free. When I finally learned the truth about the real history and doctrines of Mormonism, I realized that I was following the gospel of Joseph Smith and not the gospel of Jesus Christ. I have come to learn that many others have made a similar journey out of the bondage of religion and into an authentic relationship with Jesus. And that's what this show is all about. Courageous people who wanna share their story hoping that you, the viewer, will discover the same new life in Jesus. So if you're a Latter-day Saint who is struggling with questions or seeking a genuine encounter with the Savior, we invite you to join us tonight. We have a joyful message that we want to share with you. Hi, and welcome to another episode of the Ex-Mormon Files. I'm your host, Bishop Earl. I appreciate you spending some time watching our program. I'm really happy to not, today to uh, introduce Larry Magruder. Fascinating story, and I think you'll find it very interesting. So, Larry, as we usually do, we get started. Where were you, where were you from? Where were you born? And what's your kind of your family history there? I was born in Denver, Colorado, and uh, yeah? my childhood uh, years were spent on a little ranch outside of Fort Morgan, Colorado. Is that anywhere near Fort Collins? It's about 80 miles north and east of Denver. So oh, okay. It would north be, and east. Okay, out would, on the plains. Yes, sir. Okay. It would be okay. east of Fort Collins. That's pretty flat out there, isn't pretty it? Pretty flat. <laughs> yeah, you can see a long way out there. Yeah. So you you, you were you you were raised there pretty much uh, through my childhood years, and, yeah. and then uh, my mother uh, moved uh, me out into. Northern California, the oh. Fortuna area. Oh, okay. Fortuna. And, is yep. that where you went to school then? Or? Yes. Uh -huh. And then okay. when I graduated from high school, I went back uh, back home to Colorado. That was where I first encountered Mormonism. Oh, you know, tell us about that. Well, I was going with a young uh, LDS uh, lady who was uh, a member of the Fort Morgan LDS branch there. Oh. And uh, caught your eye, huh? <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yeah. She did. Yeah, ultimately, we, we did not spend uh, our lives together. Oh, okay. Um, but but, <laughs> but she was very attractive. She did so, indeed. Yeah. Her mother was very kind yeah. to me, especially as an, as an outsider. Yeah. And uh, the folks there in the branch uh, were very, very nice to me. Well, what was your Christian background before, or yeah, your Christian yeah. background before you encountered Mormons? I had a wonderful Christian grandmother. Yeah. And uh, she was she really played the role of my mother. Uh, my uh, my own mother uh, had a, a kind of a tendency to drift here, there, and everywhere. And so the so your grandma was kind of a stabilizing yeah, yes. force, and, and my grandfather as well. Oh, yeah. So the solidarity in you my were life good was, Christian, was there. Oh good yeah, Christian yes. Folks. My grandmother took me to church all the time yeah. as a as a child. Yeah. Um, one of the things when I talk to uh, young people at AM820, which I do frequently, mission groups and so forth, so I caution them, um, don't, uh, don't uh, date LDS people because you may well fall in love with one and, <laughs> and it can be a life changer. It was for me for yeah. 30, 36 years. Wow. I enlisted in the Air Force. Uh, after high school, after, I guess. After high school and after a period of... Uh, a year or so there in, in Fort Morgan, and then I, I received a, a Dear John letter from that young oh. lady. <laughs> <laughs> that so, ended that. So that, where did you go into the military? Where was that? That was, uh, that was uh, I, I was stationed originally in Lackland for training, and then from there to Amarillo, Texas for okay. my technical training. Uh -huh. And uh, while I was there, I, I was uh, lonely and feeling displaced, uh, like sure, most young there. servicemen do. Yeah, I was 19 people. years old. Right. And, Away from home. Yeah, and, yes, uh, sir. Exactly. So I, um, I opened up the phone book and uh, called uh, an LDS oh, church, a chapel, sure. and a nice lady on the other end answered the phone, and, and I asked her if there was some way that I might be able to 
get a ride to church. I'll night, bet they the were excited morning. to hear from you. Did they know you weren't a member, I guess, pretty soon? On I mentioned that. Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah they were really excited. Yeah, oh, I'm sure they were. Yeah. In hindsight, I didn't realize at the time, I thought I was just looking for a ride to church. But, right. Um, they, were, uh, they were really excited. and They uh, came and picked me up that morning, and uh, we attended church, and they extended an invitation to come to Sunday dinner. Oh, after church, That's nice. uh, yes, I arrived there and uh, uh, said he seated around the table with us uh, were two young men in dark suits and name tags. You quickly learned who they were, I yes, guess. Yes, yeah, yeah they, they let me know right away that they were missionaries. Yeah. And so they began the, uh, uh, teaching me the missionary discussions. Yeah. One of the things I noticed, Earl, in those discussions is that they were designed so that uh, there was really only one sensible answer to any question they asked. Yeah, I think there's probably a design to that, of uh, course. <laughs> uh, of course there is, and, and yeah. it was effective with me. Uh, it went so quickly uh, through that process so got... uh, that I was, uh, I was through it, and I was baptized, and, and um, almost took my breath away. It'll happen so quickly, I didn't wow. quite know what had happened. Yeah. I didn't really understand uh, that the uh, LDS Church was not like the the uh, little Christian Baptist church that I had attended as a been, child. Yeah. Um, well, what do you remember about the lessons? Uh, what were your impressions, uh, the good and maybe now in hindsight, maybe some things that you didn't learn? As I look back on them, I think the thing that comes to my mind is that they were very shallow. There was no real depth to them. Uh, Joseph Smith, as an example, was presented as a uh, a wonderful man who who uh, was so friendly and everyone loved him and, and he would wrestle with the teenage boys and mm -hmm. yeah. and he had this marvelous experience uh, in uh, and saw God the Father in Jesus Christ and yeah. and uh, he was the great restorer of the gospel that had been lost and it's all so shallow and, and of course there's a, a story beneath the story. Uh, uh, that I didn't but learn it, until many, many years later. it sense to you at the time. All very course. logical, yeah. very, very logical. Yeah. Uh, if you don't know the Bible and you, and you don't understand <laughs> yeah. what's happening. Wow. So, so you yeah. were, did you continue your Air Force or finish your Air Force there in Texas? Or? No, I uh, finished my training in Texas and then went on to Nellis Air Force Base at Las in Vegas, Las Nevada. Vegas, yeah. That's where I uh, met the, the uh, lady that I married. She was uh, LDS. And she was LDS. Came from an LDS family. Okay, did and, you get married uh, in the temple? Uh, yes, well, I was a convert, met her, and then uh, uh, we were married after I had been a member for, I suppose, oh gosh, 10, 11 months. Oh. So I wasn't eligible to go to the temple sure, yet. Sure. And I immediately received orders to uh, go to Tok Lee, Thailand. It was during the Vietnam War. Oh, boy. So I was there working on the, uh, the aircraft that were flying over North and South Vietnam. Uh, so uh, that meant that the temple marriage didn't happen until I came back home okay. uh, after my tour there. Okay. Um, I spent a lot of time in uh, service to the church during that year, though. I, I was called as the uh, first counselor to the servicemen's uh, group leader. Branch, yeah. Um, I got, like a branch, a small yeah. group of servicemen. And uh, I served in that capacity, and then the group leader uh, was shot down over Hanoi. Oh. And he spent the remainder of the war uh, in the Hanoi Hilton as a POW. Oh, my goodness. So uh, when that happened, because I was first counselor, that put me into the group leadership Major the role. Branch president or whatever they call it, <laughs> the servicemen's yeah, branch. At the age of uh, about 20 years old wow. at that point. Yeah. It's one of the things that the LDS church does very well is it, it moves their people forward, yeah. giving them more and more and more responsibility. Yeah, that's true. Which, of course, uh, creates a, a sense of pride. It also creates a sense of uh, commitment. Yeah. Uh, and uh, even in the missionary program for going out at 18 or 19 uh, it does that same thing gives you the confidence to meet and deal with people for sure it certainly does yeah. 
So you were active during this time, and then you came home. Uh, I came home, and we were uh, my uh, then wife and I were sealed in the Oakland Temple. Oh, okay. Um, terrible experience for me. Not the sealing part; it was beautiful. Yeah. Uh, the, the the portion in the sealing room, and where your the sealing is actually married. done. It was the married uh, for time and all eternity. Yes, yeah, uh, yeah. As, as the doctrine <laughs> teaches. Of course, we know that's not true now. <laughs> uh, but, but what what wasn't uh... well the entire temple experience uh, for me was was negative uh, the washing and anointing portion of it uh, very I, I, strange uh, it? yeah very strange yeah. very strange and then the uh, the penalties of course this was years ago those are oh, gone back now. before 1990 yeah, yeah. the slashing motions uh, all yeah. of that bothered me the uh, uh, did you realize then that it had the, such Masonic roots to it? Oh, I, the no. The handshakes and the, the wording and all that? I had no idea. I didn't either. N not no. a bit, no. Yeah. I assumed that what they, were, so they taught me was true, that it was oh, revealed course. to Joseph Smith of course. by God. <laughs> and I, th I remember feeling a sense of disquiet and, and I felt out of place, uncomfortable. Yeah and didn't quite know what to do. <laughs> Consequently, even though I was very, very active for 36 years in the LDS well, Church. Yeah, tell us just a little, in summary, I know you were in a couple of bishop bricks and... Uh, yeah, I did a lot of different things. Gospel doctrine teacher. Yeah. And I became a 70 uh, not long after that temple back experience. Back when they had 70s. Back when they had yeah. 70s. Yeah. So I served a stake mission. Yeah. I uh, did that. I um, was a... Uh, then became a high priest because I was ordained uh, or Put in set apart into the, into the bishopric. Sure. As, uh, and I served as both first and second counselor. Wow. And, and uh, in two different bishoprics. Just never any and question I, that the church was true, was there? No, it, it all seemed very, uh, very correct and logical to me. Yeah. I was so busy, I don't suppose I had a chance to think much about it. I did a, yeah. a, 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 quite a period as the stake Sunday school president. Oh, my goodness. Uh, yeah. I did um, a gospel doctrine teacher for years and years. I, I taught did the, the gospel doctrine class you for the adults. You studied a lot of Mormon doctrine and history, I guess. Well... As yeah. they present it, uh, well, sure, uh, yeah. Earl, that's the problem. Yeah, I, I didn't really know the the history, and I didn't know the doctrine in a deep way. I, I knew what the manual wanted me to teach. That's an interesting way to say that because that's what we really learn in Mormon. I mean, the, our, our lessons are so planned out; they know exactly what we're teaching, and they're really, really not encouraged to go beyond what the manuals. Tell us, right? You're absolutely correct. Yeah, <laughs> the, you don't uh, you don't change the the uh, lesson yeah. in any appreciable way. Right. Uh, that's for sure. <laughs> but I did that for a long time. I did a lot of teaching. Yeah. Uh, I taught a temple uh, preparation class. Oh, that's interesting. You know, <laughs> I wish I could undo that. Yeah. Did uh, your wife? She remained active, and my wife uh, at the time did. We're no yeah. longer married. I'll tell you about that in a okay. minute. Okay. <clears throat> Children. Four. Four children with her. Two boys, two girls. And where were you doing? Where were they being raised? And In uh, Las Vegas, Nevada. Okay, still yeah. there. Huh? Still there yeah. after the Air Force. Okay. Uh, so, yep. That's well, so I guess the big question is if, if what happens? I mean, what uh, after 30-some years of activity and what, what kind of happens in your life? Well, I think it, it was a gradual process for me. Was it? Uh, it was a slow disillusionment. The, the temple was a was a severe blow, although I, I put it on a shelf probably. Put it on a like shelf. I did. Do, put yeah. it away. Tried not to worry about it. Yeah. Um, I think as the years rolled on, uh, I was busy, very busy in the church, typically, especially during the bishopric years. It was nothing to put in 20 extra hours uh, oh, for yeah. the church, yeah. maybe even 25. Some Sundays and so Tuesday Sundays nights. Sundays were 12 and 14 hour days. Leadership meetings. <laughs> on and on and on. And oh, do I well remember. <laughs> yes, brother, I'm sure you do. My, uh, my little children were uh, 
they were neglected, frankly, yeah, in mm -hmm. favor of the church, and that's something I'll always regret yeah, that I can't fix. That time's gone. And yeah, I have a wonderful relationship with my adult children and my grandchildren. Oh, but, good. But there's time lost that yeah. I, I wish I could have back that I gave to service in the, yeah. in the Mormon church. Um, I think uh, one of the things that, that happens to LDS people is uh, they become isolated. My only friends were other Not from Mormons. each other, but from outside influences. Yes, yeah, that's precisely. a good point. Pretty much my only friends were LDS. Sure. And um, I was feeling increasingly isolated. And By nature, I'm gregarious. I like people. I enjoy visiting yeah. with folks and so forth. And I, so well, that the family is very important to the church and, extremely. Own, and the culture and the social. And I think it makes it difficult, doesn't it, for those of us who start looking at the doctrine and history a little differently mm -hmm. because we have this huge uh, culture and family that, that we know is going to be challenged by what we're... It's terrible. Yeah. Yeah, when, when I left, it was, it was horrible. Uh, well, besides the temple, what happened? And well, anything over that? time, I, uh, I began to feel exhausted and frustrated. Yeah. Uh, unfulfilled, but I couldn't find Jesus Christ. That was the biggest problem for me. Had uh, you felt like you'd known him as a young person? Yes, I, I think I did. And I, you never I, felt like you were finding him? I felt like everything was in the way. Uh, or all, I felt like I was fighting my way through this, this curtain of uh, activity and requirements and, and being judged in every way imaginable. A low point for me was a... Um, Easter Sunday, I'll never forget, uh, got the kids all dressed up and everybody's ready to go for a, a wonderful Easter Sunday sacrament service. And uh, we sat through the entire service. I was not in the bishopric at that point. I was probably teaching the gospel doctrine class. Mm -hmm. And we sat through that entire service and uh, as we walked out of the chapel at the end of the service, uh, I turned to my wife and I said, how did we manage to go through an entire Easter Sunday service Don't and stop. never mention uh, Jesus Christ except in prayers, except in the, the ending of the prayers? I was stunned that that, 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 that could happen. It was a huge you blow really to me. paid attention to that. Yeah, that, that stayed with me and it bothered me. I'm sure that happened to me, but I never paid attention to that. I didn't realize until I started looking back how how little I mean, we talk tithing and temple and home teaching and yes and pioneers pioneers and Joseph Smith yeah. and the Book of Mormon and stuff but yep yeah isn't that interesting Jesus so simply that. wasn't there I I noticed that and it, it bothered me in a very deep way uh, what'd okay. your wife say did she she just shrugged her shoulders and said oh it's okay it's uh, what it's always been yeah so, yeah you know, it didn't seem much different <laughs> yeah it wasn't strange for her yeah but it it was for me and that was a that was a huge blow i think that um lessened my confidence yeah. in the mormon church uh i had already begun to lose confidence in the culture because of the yeah. judgmentalism uh, i remember for instance uh, we went on vacation as a family and uh, we were gone a couple of weeks, and I uh, had never had a beard. And I thought, well, this will be interesting. I won't shave during this two-week two period weeks, just to see true. what I look like with a, yeah. a beard. And uh, I knew the, that I would have to shave it on Monday before I went to work because my job required that yeah. we be clean-shaven. Uh, but I decided, well, I'll, I'll just wear it to church. On Sunday, yeah. On Sunday, yeah. not thinking too much of it one way or the other. And uh, I walked into the, uh, the church, and uh, one of my fellow high priests came marching up to me, an, an older fellow, and, and he backed me up against a wall, and he said, Brother Magruder, that beard has got to go. And ironically, he backed me up against the wall that had the picture of all the prophets hanging on it. Oh, and so, more than half of them have beards, of yes, course. Yes, yeah. yeah. And, That's interesting. And I, I turned and I pointed at the wall and said, well, brother, how about them? <laughs> and he said uh, rather self-righteously, um, you're not a prophet. And oh, he, he walked away in anger and... Uh, that didn't sit well. I'm no, sure. that was that was kind of a, a blow. Yeah. And I felt uh, judged. Well, I, 
Larry, you're actually a pastor in our area. Yes. And you pastor the Wasatch Cowboy Church. Yes. Uh, and Hoop, Hooper. 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 <laughs> That's right. And so I know that you've, uh, you probably encourage people to, uh, to come to Christ in many ways. And I, I, so tell us a little bit about your journey in coming to, to Christ and, and uh, maybe a born again experience or whatever you Oh, had. I'd, I'd love to do that. I, okay. That's a, the high point of my life. Yeah. It's the best thing that has ever happened to me. I uh, left the LDS church, made that decision after careful study intensive study it was just for me the it doctrine was doctrine and the history and mm, yeah mostly the doctrine uh, yeah. it just didn't line up with the bible and so it was an intellectual decision for me uh, not an angry decision yeah i, I left broken hearted uh, my wife uh, uh, couldn't take that and so she left me and found someone else really because of this yeah i found someone on the internet uh, which uh, of course uh, meant I lost my home. I, I even lost my livelihood because we worked together. Oh my goodness. So I wound up in a very small little cheap apartment uh, scratching and scrambling to survive. And uh, I remember uh, the night, or the day that I received my divorce papers in the mail, uh, I was slated to go to a Bible study. Uh, that night, and I called uh, Gwen Meyer, who was hosting the Bible study, she and Don, her husband. And I said, I, I don't think I can go tonight, Gwen. I am just so sad. I don't think I can do it. And she said, well, Larry, tonight of all nights, you have to be here. And so uh, I went, and I was sitting there at the table. Eight or ten people put a, a hand on me, and they prayed humbly for comfort and peace oh. in, in, in my life. And... That was a huge step for me. I yeah. walked out of there realizing I am not alone. No. I thought I was alone, and I'm not, yeah. uh, because I am loved and cared for. And a little time went on, not long. And um, one morning, I was uh, driving to work early in the morning in the in the dark. It was in the fall of the year, still dark outside, and and uh, I was listening to the old lighthouse ministry. I don't know if you know what that is. It was a drama uh, no, I put don't on on the radio. Yeah. I think it came out of Chicago. Yeah. Each one of those uh, dramas uh, has a, a, a portion where the, the person being dramatized finds Christ. And I listened to wow. that every morning. And I was reading my Bible and, and uh, really striving to, uh, to grow close to Jesus Christ. And, and I, uh, I just had an uh, overwhelming urge to pull my truck over to the side of the highway. And uh, I sat there quietly in the dark for a few moments. And then I bowed my head. My pride was gone. I was completely broken. I had nothing left except him. And uh, my little weak faith, my beginner's faith. <laughs> and uh, I just gave it all. I just gave it all. Oh my goodness. And I sat there and cried. <clears throat> yeah for a while and uh, it got better after that. I can't say that it was immediately good. It took some years. Yeah. But a few years uh, later, I guess three, four years later, it would be three years later, I met my, my wife, yeah. uh, Lily, and uh, she's the perfect <laughs> pastor's wife. Is she really? <laughs> she is so wonderful. She oh. loves everybody. Everybody loves her. Yeah. People are in and out of our house continuously all day and, and sometimes late into the night and they're always welcome and they always have something placed before them to eat or drink. Wow. She is a wonderful little hostess and a, a valiant prayer warrior. Yeah. And uh, just, I could not have been blessed more Look, greatly. Looking back, do you, do you see uh, the journey that you, God's probably been guiding you along this whole way <clears throat> in different ways, and do you feel like um, that it's been worth it? Oh, yeah. It, it's been amazing. Yeah. It's been amazing. It's almost as if, well, it is as if I have lived two lives. Uh, and I teach it this way uh, for other folks. Uh, as I look back on my life, uh, Earl, I can see a flag that God has planted <laughs> in the soil of my life and it's fluttering there and right at that moment he stepped in and he did something that changed my Touched course and that's yeah. happened over and over and over again yeah. and, um, 
So we, now you you do find Jesus in church, don't you? <laughs> oh, yeah. We, we planted uh, Wasatch Cowboy Church. It's going, coming up on four years ago, and, and uh, wow. suicide has been prevented. Many people have found faith in Christ. We have had folks who have conquered uh, drug addiction, alcoholism. Isn't that fulfilling? Yeah. To... So marriages, some marriages are stronger than they ever were. Oh. And, a lot of things have happened along the way, and, and uh, Jesus Christ is at the head of the procession. Yeah. The Bible, is, I don't know what that meant to you as a Mormon, but... Uh, it didn't mean enough, uh, because no. I didn't know enough about it. Interestingly, yeah. when I was a gospel doctrine teacher, after I began to lose faith, I could always teach during the year that we did the Bible, and, and <laughs> I enjoyed doing that. But when we got to the Book of Mormon... Doctrine and Covenants or Pearl of Great Price, I would find a reason to be released because I, really? couldn't, I couldn't teach it. I just could not bring myself to teach it. But I love to teach the Bible. I don't think Mormons realize how deep and rich the Bible really is because we are so superficial with it. With it. I say we, but I mean, they're so superficial with it over the four years. I mean, they only teach it for a few months really out of the year. That's and, true. And it just is, and they don't go into depth at all of what, what really the gospel that the Bible has for us. No, they don't. I can illustrate that for you. I was, Please. <laughs> I was teaching a class, uh, oh gosh, it's probably been four years ago, and there was a, an LDS lady uh, attending the class. Yeah. And uh, one, uh, one morning she picked up her Bible that the class had purchased for her, <laughs> And uh, she held it up and she said, this is my new best friend. I had no idea what was here. She went on to find faith in Christ and was baptized. Oh, that's so, so rewarding, isn't it? Oh, indeed it is, yeah. What do, you think they, what do you think Mormons most misunderstand? I know we've only got just a short time. Maybe, maybe the better question with the time that we have left is, what would you say to the Mormons? What do they most misunderstand and what would you like them to you say to you or to them or to your family or about your faith i think what i would what i would say earl is that lds people uh, are suffering many of them are like i was uh, their faith is is weakened or completely gone and they're, they don't know what to do they need to be loved and they need to be cared for I would, in fact, urge our, my Christian brothers and sisters to befriend their Mormon neighbors, love them, care about them. We have, our church is not large, but it's almost entirely ex-Mormon people. And almost every one of them have come because yeah. somebody cared about them and loved them. Their relationships with the church, not with God and Jesus, right? Y and yes, so the in the Mormons. In Mormons. Yes. So their relationships with the church, and then they find out that there's a a wrinkle here or there, there's a problem with the historical or doctrinal. Yeah. They don't have any foundation to fall back on. That's right. Well, Larry, we're, guess what? We're done. We're done. Thank yeah. you so much, and what a wonderful story. I appreciate you yeah. sharing it with us. Thank you. And thank you for joining us, and we'll see you on another episode of The Ex-Mormon Files. Good night. Thank you.